in this topic we are going to talk about trade unions and it their effect on international industrial relations so we will be, we will be discussing how trade unions in what ways they affect the dynamics of international industrial relations the so trade unions they may limit the strategic choices of multinational enterprises in three ways number 1 by influencing wage levels to the extent that cost structures may become uncompetitive uh, number 2 by constraining ability of the multinational to vary employment levels at will and number 3 by hindering or preventing global in the, uh, in uh, integration of operations of multinational enterprises so now let's discuss number 1 trade unions they influence the wage levels that is the first effect of trade unions the things that they try to do is that they want to uh, to affect the wage levels and they influence the organizations to increase the wage levels uh, more than the practical limit and since wages and salaries they are one of the major cost uh, if a, there is certain type of pressure on the wage level then the multinationals ability to remain cost effective may be affected uh, so if the trade unions they affect your wage levels and salaries to that extent that you have to pay so much to your employees and laborers then your ability to remain cost effective may be uh, compromised it is more important in the international scenario because when you move from one country to the other uh, it is possible that the amount of payments that you are able to pay in one country is more flexible than the amount of payments you are able to make in another country because of various different dynamics so for example you can pay more to people in pakistan because the uh, cost of living and the proportion uh, and and the gdp all of these things they are quite low uh, and uh, the uh, per capita income is also something which is quite low uh, so it is uh, something which you can uh, bargain very easily whereas if you want to pay in a developed country for example if you want to pay somebody in the united states or let's say in the uk uh the per capita incomes the general market standards uh the cost of living all these things they are so high already uh and if then you are also affected by the trade union pressures it is not possible for a multinational coming from a developing country to establish its subsidiaries in a developed countries because there are so many pressures of cost that they will not remain cost effective uh so the trade unions they affect the multinationals by influencing the wage levels uh the second thing which these trade unions can do is constraining the ability of multinational enterprises to vary employment levels at will this is more of a concern than the concern of influencing wage level you can pay a productive employee more because if the person is bringing you profits you are in a possibility in a position to pay that person more but the ability to fire or lay off a productive worker because you want to reduce your uh, production levels you want to change the strategy of your organization you are restructuring you are um, uh, selling off that the kind of situation is something which is more difficult to manage because trade unions they do not allow you to vary your employment levels in case that you want to go for uh, plant closures uh, layoffs and redundancy programs this is something that the organizations multinationals have to do extensively why because Uh, or not all the time all operations are successful not all the time all businesses they are flourishing 
at times there are times of losses at times there are times of profits but these trade unions they make sure that you are not able to close a plant where people are employed you are not able to lay off at a uh, sub, uh, at a substantial level because people are employed and it is their right that you should keep them employed unless they are not uh, less productive or unless there is not any fault at their end uh, so uh, this fact that you cannot change the employment levels you cannot close a plant you cannot close a a, a branch you cannot close a particular subsidiary because you are affected because you are influenced by the trade unions not to do so unless you can show it in a hard and fast way that uh, yes this is something which is uh, which is more re most required but the process of showing this is that that uh, showing the need is very long and drawn out so you need to make a very clear and structured form of statement uh, you need to show uh, in transparent records that this is something which is not profitable and your company is going bankrupt or your company is facing facing such kind of situation in which in which it is impossible to pay these people and to keep the plant running and to or to keep the people employed in this particular uh, branch or area uh, so if the organization that wants to go for changing the employment level in the shape of redundancy or layoffs or plant closures they are restricted by the trade unions unless they can actually make a point and this is more of a pressure than just influencing wage levels then trade unions they can influence this process uh, in 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 two ways uh, they can influence the um, uh, the employment levels to be kept at a certain level in two ways number one is by lobbying their own national governments to introduce redundancy legislation so ek to ye ke wo apni mulk ki jo legislation uh, aur unki jo politicians hain unke sath lobby kar sakte hain taaki aise legislations lekar aaye jaye jisme redundancy itne aaram se na ki ja sake and secondly by regu encouraging regulation of multinationals by international organizations for example the ilo or the oecd uh, so they also lobby with these international organizations which are regulating the functions of multinationals and they keep on issuing guidelines to which the multinationals should adhere in order to be accepted as acceptable organizations so these trade unions they lobby with these international organization as well ek to wo apni national institutions ke sath lobby karte hain dusra wo in international organizations ke sath lobby karte hain to put pressure on multinationals that they should uh, make decisions which are transparent and which actually show that the um, redundancy programs or the layoffs or plant closures they are done under severe need of the multinational uh then they can hinder or prevent global international uh, integration of operations of multinationals uh isme hum general motors ki ek example quote karenge uh general motors jo hain unhon unko german jo um, trade union hai uh they uh, pressurize them to carry out heavy investment in germany to match the investment they had done in spain and austria so rather than ke general motors jo hai wo apni investment spain on austria mein karke to wahan se production ko manage kar le german jo uh, trade unions hain unhone general motors ko influence kiya aur unko pressurize kiya ke wo germany mein bhi utni hi investment kare aur germany mein bhi plants jo hain unko uh, running rakhe so this was done on the demand of german metal workers union it is one of the most influential union of germany uh, so in uh, general motors had to give in uh, because they wanted to foster good industrial relations in germany so they made these investments and 
these investments were made not because the investment was required but it was made because it was a pressure from the trade unions and it led to a phenomena which is called sub optimization and sub optimization is when you are producing at not at the optimum levels and not with the maximum efficiency you have invested at various different places but that is not if you integrate your global operations you put it put them in one place and you manage your production at those uh, integrated places you will be more cost effective but you are when you are doing this you are sub optimizing your operations and what was the effect of that the effect was that the unit manufacturing cost of those automobiles that was 15% more than the average more than the uh, uh, than the rational manufacturing price uh, so this kind of strategy is used by uh, trade unions to put pressure on multinationals uh, to uh, raise their investment levels to raise their employment levels to raise their wage levels more than what is planned or what is rationally um, chalked out by the multinational company so these are the ways in which trade unions can influence multinational companies